You're listening to our greatest hour, the most inspirational hour on radio. It's so addictive. I was born in Bethel, Kansas, into an African American family and raised in the church founded by my maternal grandparents. I've induced miracles in my life, dined with African royalty, experienced romance with avatars. I've been chauffeured to the seven pools of Hana to heal twice and studied contemporary sciences in the best schools in the Western world. I've surfed the Florida and Caribbean coast and spoken to thousands about how to manifest the life they imagine. My name is Tammy Taylor. I am known as the manifestation muse of the most inspirational hour on radio. Our greatest hour radio show is the hour God's light shines in us all. Jump out of the daydream into your life. Listen to our greatest hour radio show, Hump Day at High Noon, traveling on a new train of thought from the Tanta 1340 station. I'm Tammy Taylor, the Manifestation Muse, ready to work you with special guest Marsha Jean Carter, greeting our greatest hour train locomotive in the motor city of Detroit to see the light of the truth beaming off her Neo Soul Poetry debut CD, Broccoli Don't Taste Like Peach Cobbler. All aboard WTAN WDCF and listeners online at Tantop1340.com to see the light of special guest, poet, and performance artist extraordinaire, Marsha Jean Carter. This train is pulling out. Why is it that I know what's good for me, but I gravitate towards things I know I don't need? I guess it's just a reality that broccoli don't taste like peach cob. You're listening to our greatest hour, the most inspirational hour on radio. Good morning, Mr. Turner. Good morning, Tammy. I just made the train. <laughs> well, hey, you're riding on with us. Thank you so much for inviting our greatest hour train to come up and visit. You were teaching the secret long before we even knew there was a secret. Yeah, the secret is simply all things are possible to him that believe it. It comes from the Holy Bible, Mark 9, 23. The only teacher I had that would get me off the farm and out of poverty was the Holy Bible because there were no positive thinking books back in them days in the early 60s. There was also one I finally got a hold of, Napoleon Hill, Thank You Grow Rich, and How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie, those two books I leaned on. But uh, success has always been when you're happy doing your thing. But you can take back your mind. If you want to accomplish anything in this world, you first must take back your mind. It's as simple as that. Everything we have known, we're taught, and believe is rapidly changing. We must now become re-educated and use more of ourselves to meet the many new challenges that confront us. Caught between beckoning opportunities and threatening dangers, the hour has come to awaken, rise, and decide. On the horizon is our greatest hour, beckoning us toward our greatest human and divine. Yes, and this is what the Christ meant by us being sons of God. And it is just miraculous, like you said, being in touch with the whole idea of creating our day. This is what uh, we've been called upon to do and the need to renew our minds in order to be able to do so effectively is truly exciting. We're seeing that there's such an openness to this relearning. What's one of the first things that you would say that one who is open to relearning actually how we do set our intentions for the day as you uh, stated in the um, What the Bleep film. The truth is is that intention is only one ingredient to, to creation. 
intention is just getting clear on what we want. Learn more about uh, Carolyn Mace's work, who's our special guest here on Our Greatest Hour. Carolyn, uh, you mentioned how you have found that people are afraid of God. Um, and in your recent work, the four CD set, The Sacred Contract of America, you make it very clear that our nation's founding fathers were not. And not only were they not afraid of God, they were not afraid to manifest the light of God in them, even in the face of many times people forget this was originally uh, a colony. Of Britain, they stood up and said, you are not going to decide what's best for us. We're going to decide what's well, best for r- us. First of all, um, the, the founding fathers were not religious people. Let's be real clear here. They did not, they, they were not proponents of um, religion. Uh, in fact, many of them shunned religion as, um, uh, shall we say, um, the political game that it was, a control mechanism. What they were were humanitarians. What they were were members, they came from an age of enlightenment in which they were very influenced by the writers like John Hobbes and, and Rousseau and John Locke who recognized that, this, that there was a, a spirit within the human being. And they said, let anybody have any religion they want. We don't care about that. God says you should do this. God says you should. Where? Where do you get off with that? Spirituality really is about your purpose, your mission, while you're, why you're here on earth, and how you can make a difference while you're here. So there are two different things, religion and spirituality, but one builds upon another. But if we are going to change the path that uh, our planet is taking and uh, remove it from uh, a head-on collision with violence and killing and war uh, and um, the many negative energies that are swirling around us today, if we're going to make a, ch- a shift in, our, in the path that we're taking, it's going to be education uh, that's going to be the primary tool in creating that uh, change of direction for all of humanity. We need to, in short, Tammy, we need to tell a new idea uh, to ourselves about who we are and our right relationship with each other, our most powerful relationship with each other, and our right and most powerful relationship with God. It's not like what's going to happen in 2012. We have the free will choice to place ourselves back into right relationship with the unity consciousness, part of the Maya prophecy. But it's also, it's our own choice, really, because it's not predetermined. It's not about destroying ego. It's about, I guess you would say, making ego transparent to the divine light, the eternal essence light that always is underneath and then can shine through. And in that process, we are restored to right relationship with our true selves. Because I really believe that if we're open, the universe is basically trying to evolve us, to awaken us to our true potential. But let the price of oil go up at the, at the, at the, at the gas station, and all of a sudden people are screaming because they have to pay a nickel more. And that's the measure of their patriotism. Whether or not a they have to pay a nickel more, and then they're screaming, not because they've lost their civil rights, but because they have to pay a nickel more at a gas station. Wow, it's a, not because yeah. they can't, they don't have the right to talk anymore. Not because they can get hauled off because habeas corpus is suspended. Not because of anything important, but because they have to pay a nickel more. It's the truth. It's like the truth. this, this, this is normal. This is okay. This is okay. Thank I cannot get over this. Hey, somebody needs to be mad. Well, <laughs> and, and I'm glad. I'm, hey, why isn't somebody? Uh, what? Where are these Americans? Because of where part are of what you we're heading back into the Tan Talk station in Tampa Bay. But before we pull out, did you have any last?